So the, the way we know we're right is by the response of patients to targeting glutamine, uh, glucose and glutamine, uh, glucose and glutamine at the same time by transitioning the whole body over to therapeutic ketosis. The cancer cells can't burn fatty acids or ketone bodies, and they're dependent on, on glucose and glutamine for no. their dysregulated growth. Is that generally true? No cancer can burn fatty acids? No, because they accumulate them in the lipid droplets. They, they can't, you can't, we have, in fact, we throw it out to the field. Anybody who can show us a cancer cells that, that can grow on fatty acids or ketones in the absence of fermentable fuels, I'll give them a hundred bucks. I have the hundred dollars <laughs> here. Yeah, guess what? No, in, in fact, one of my colleagues said, I'll give you a thousand bucks. The cancer cell can't grow without fermentable fuels. It's, it yep. can't burn, fatty acids are non-fermentable. Okay, so, so this brings us to now the question of, well, so there's two questions I want to get to. We're going to have to take them separately. So there's the question of, if you put a if you put people into ketosis with a ketogenic diet, to what extent can this prevent or treat existing cancers? And then there's the question that we have to get to eventually, which is if broken energy production in the mitochondria is a cause of cancer, we have to then ask, well, what's breaking the the mitochondria to begin with? Let's take those one at a time. So talk a little bit more about ketosis and the, the use of a ketogenic diet, say, as a cancer prevention or treatment modality. Well, I, you know, I, years ago when I did the calorie restriction stuff, I, I said, well, you know, how do, when we did the comparative analysis of mouse and human, you have to understand basal metabolic rate. The basal metabolic rate of a mouse is seven times that of, 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 a, of a human. So when we were getting these spectacular responses to calorie restriction in the mouse, we said, wow, wow, we, let's see, how do we have to, how do we translate that over the human? It's water only fasting. So I said, oh my God, because we saw water only fasting in the human produces the same biochemical parameter changes you see in a mouse under 40% calorie restriction. So we thought, oh, just cut down your food by 40%, you'll get what this mouse does. No, 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 you gotta go water only fasting because the difference is in beta, basal metabolic rate. So I said, wow, that, that ain't gonna fly. Uh, uh, how many people with cancer are going to say, oh, I, now I got to not eat for 14, 20, 20 days, just drink water. People don't want to do that. So we were working with the ketogenic diet and epilepsy, and the little kids were seeming to be uh, okay with that. So we said, why don't we try to, because people, that seems at least you're eating something. You're not like feeling you're going to starve to death. And then uh, we started to work the ketogenic diets. Our knowledge of ketogenic diets for epilepsy applied to the, to the cancer problem. 